In a world increasingly characterized by the rapid pace of change, the cacophony of digital noise, and the ceaseless pursuit of external validation, the Stoic philosophy emerges as a beacon of tranquility and resilience. Yet, amidst this oasis of calm, some find the Stoic demeanor perplexing, even irksome. Why do Stoics stand apart in a society that oscillates between extremes of joy and despair? One might wonder. It's a curiosity that unfolds into 10 absurd reasons people cannot stand Stoic. A journey into the heart of misunderstandings and the humorous, often exaggerated, reasons why the Stoic way of life might ruffle feathers in the modern world. Marcus Aurelius once penned, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. This statement underpins the Stoic commitment to inner tranquility and virtue, irrespective of external circumstances, a commitment that, uh, paradoxically, sometimes alienates those not acquainted with its depth and richness. Have you ever paused to consider why a Stoic's peace in the face of adversity might appear unsettling? Or why their preference for meaningful conversation over small talk could be misconstrued as aloofness? This exploration is not merely an exercise in identifying differences, but an invitation to delve deeper into the Stoic mindset. It challenges us to question our reactions to Stoicism's principles and to reflect on what our discomforts reveal about our own perspectives on happiness, virtue, and the essence of a life well lived. Join us as we navigate through these 10 amusingly absurd reasons, from the Stoics' alleged time travel abilities to their philosophical approach to traffic jams. This journey is not just about understanding why Stoicism might be misunderstood, but about uncovering the timeless wisdom that underlies this philosophical tradition, inviting us to reconsider what truly matters in our own lives. Comment ready if you are ready to step into the journey today. Lesson 1. Stoic's Chill Factor can freeze over social media drama. In an era where social media platforms have become the colosseums of modern-day verbal gladiators, the Stoic enters the arena armed with a weapon so potent yet serene, an unshakable chill factor. This isn't just any form of composure, it's a tranquility so profound that it could metaphorically freeze the fiery darts of drama and conflict that are the currency of these digital realms. But how can a philosophy that predates the internet by centuries offer such a timeless antidote to the volatility of online interactions? Seneca, a sage of Stoicism, once mused, we are more often frightened than hurt and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. Apply this wisdom to the context of social media. How often are the battles waged in comment sections born not out of concrete grievances, but out of misinterpreted tone, assumption, and the echo chambers of our own making? Have you ever paused before responding to a provocation online? asking yourself if this is truly a battle worth your peace. Imagine scrolling through a heated thread and, instead of diving into the fray, choosing to reflect on why it disturbs your equilibrium. Is it because it challenges your beliefs or is it merely the discomfort of discord? Marcus Aurelius, another Stoic luminary, offers a guiding light. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. What if the strength to not only survive, 
but thrive amidst social media chaos lies not in having the last word, but in choosing silence. Or better yet, a thoughtful response that seeks to illuminate rather than incinerate. The Stoics' chill factor on social media is not a withdrawal, but a strategic engagement, a choice to elevate the discourse by disengaging from the trivial and focusing on what truly matters. In doing so, they become beacons of reason in a sea of reactivity. Could this stoic tranquility be the secret to transforming our online spaces into forums of genuine exchange and understanding rather than battlegrounds for the ego? Lesson 2. They seem to have a secret society for not complaining. Within the bustling, often chaotic tapestry of modern life, there exists a quiet, resilient collective that might as well be termed a secret society for not complaining. Members of this society aren't bound by secret handshakes or clandestine meetings. Instead, they share a philosophical lineage tracing back to the Stoics of ancient Greece and Rome who believed in the profound power of acceptance and the transformative potential of adversity. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher who was born a slave, encapsulated this ethos when he proclaimed, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. To the Stoic, life's challenges are not obstacles to happiness, but are the very material from which happiness is sculpted. But how does this translate into the modern context of relentless deadlines, overflowing inboxes, and the constant barrage of bad news? The Stoic secret society does not escape these realities. Rather, its members engage with them differently. They ask themselves, what is within my control? When faced with adversity, they see a dual opportunity, a chance to practice resilience and a moment to grow in virtue. Have you ever considered what might happen if, instead of complaining about a difficult situation, you asked yourself what it could teach you? Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, offers guidance that is as applicable today as it was in his time you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Imagine applying this principle the next time you're tempted to complain. What strength might you find in silence? This secret society doesn't shy away from life's challenges. Instead, they welcome them as the raw materials from which wisdom and virtue are forged. By adopting this stoic practice, we too can learn to see every difficulty as a stepping stone to personal growth and tranquility. Are you ready to join this noble society, transforming every complaint into an opportunity for self-improvement? Lesson 3. Stoics are time travellers who refuse to get stressed by modern tech. Imagine a world where the incessant pings of your smartphone, the relentless pace of software updates, and the ever-looming spectre of email overload simply don't bother you. Welcome to the Stoics universe a place where the digital chaos of the 21st century meets the unflappable calm of ancient philosophy. It's as if Stoics, with their emphasis on living in the present, have discovered a form of time travel, whisking their inner selves back to a less complicated era. But how do they achieve this seemingly Herculean feat in an age dominated by technology? Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. 
Realize this, and you will find strength. This perspective is at the heart of the Stoic's approach to modern tech. While we scramble to keep up with the latest gadgets, Stoics remind us that our reaction to these tools is within our control. Have you ever considered that your smartphone isn't stressful in itself, but your reaction to it might be? Seneca, another Stoic heavyweight, offers advice that sounds remarkably contemporary. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Isn't it the fear of missing out, the anxiety of unread messages, and the imagined catastrophes of unanswered emails that truly stress us out, rather than the devices themselves? So, how can we apply this stoic time travel to our lives? Next time you feel overwhelmed by technology, ask yourself, is it the device that disturbs me, or is it my judgment about it? What if you viewed each notification not as a demand, but as a suggestion, and each software update not as a chore, but as an opportunity to practice patience? By embracing these stoic principles, we can find serenity amidst the silicon, proving that perhaps the best way to navigate the future is with wisdom from the past. Are you ready to join the Stoics in their time travel? Finding peace in the present by letting go of the digital distress? Let's discuss in the comments. Lesson 4. They use philosophy as a superpower to avoid traffic jams. In the throes of rush hour, as cars snake along the asphalt veins of the city in a sluggish rhythm, there exists a group of individuals who, amidst the chorus of honks and sighs, find themselves curiously at peace. These are the Stoics, who wield philosophy not as a mere intellectual exercise, but as a superpower to transcend the frustration of traffic jams it's a notion that might provoke a chuckle, imagining Stoics invoking Marcus Aurelius instead of muttering curses under their breath. Yet, this scenario is not as fanciful as it might appear. Consider the words of Epictetus. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. To the Stoic caught in traffic, the situation presents not an obstacle, but an opportunity. An opportunity to practice patience, to reflect on the day, or to simply observe the world around them. But how does one cultivate such a mindset? Ask yourself, when was the last time you used a delay to ponder life's larger questions, or to appreciate a moment of stillness in your otherwise hectic day? Imagine transforming the time spent in traffic into a mobile meditative retreat. Marcus Aurelius offers guidance for such moments. Nowhere can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul. In the confines of their vehicle, the Stoic retreats inward, finding solace in their thoughts, untroubled by the standstill around them. This stoic superpower, the ability to remain unbothered by traffic jams, stems from a deep understanding that we control our reactions to external events. By viewing every red light as a moment to pause and every delay as a lesson in patience, stoics navigate the roads less traveled by modern frustration, embodying a tranquility that perplexes the hurried driver. In essence, while the traffic jam may physically constrain them, their spirits roam free, untouched by the chaos of the commute. Lesson 5. Their idea of fun is contemplating the universe's indifference. To an outsider, the Stoic's notion of a good time might seem as vast and perplexing as the universe itself. 
Imagine a group of Stoics, gathered not for revelry in the conventional sense, but to mull over the universe's grand indifference to human affairs. It's a peculiar form of entertainment, one that might elicit bemused glances from those accustomed to more traditional pastimes. Yet, within this seemingly somber reflection lies a profound source of joy and liberation for the Stoic. Seneca, with his usual blend of wisdom and wit, muses, all the universe is change, and life itself is, but what you deem it. To contemplate the universe's indifference is not to wallow in nihilism, but to embrace the freedom it offers, the freedom from undue attachment to the transient and the trivial. But how does one find joy in such contemplation? How can the acknowledgement of our insignificance in the cosmic scale inspire anything but despair? Consider for a moment the last time you gazed up at the night sky, awash with stars, galaxies and infinite space. Did you feel diminished? Or did you sense a kind of release? A relief from the self-imposed prisons of ego and ambition? Marcus Aurelius offers a perspective. Dwell on the beauty of life, watch the stars, and see yourself running with them. The Stoic finds fun, even exhilaration, in recognizing that the dramas of human life are but specks against the vast backdrop of the cosmos. This realization is not a resignation, but a celebration of the freedom to focus on what truly matters, virtue, kindness, and the pursuit of wisdom. By contemplating the universe's indifference, Stoics align themselves with the natural order, finding peace in the acceptance of things beyond their control. In this cosmic perspective, the Stoic discovers not only amusement, but a profound sense of connection and purpose. We'd like to thank and congratulate you on being halfway through today's video. Your presence here shows that you are completely ready for this journey. Let's turn your attention to the remaining five reasons in finding out why people cannot stand Stoic. Lesson 6. Stoics, the only people who don't need a weather app. In a world where technology grants us the illusion of control over our lives, Stoics stand apart, embodying the serenity of those who have mastered the art of acceptance. Nowhere is this more evident than in their approach to one of life's most unpredictable elements, the weather. While the rest of us obsessively check our weather apps, planning our days around percentages of precipitation and degrees of temperature. Stoics greet each day's forecast with a shrug of equanimity. It's a humorous thought. The idea that Stoics, in their profound wisdom, have transcended the need for weather apps, viewing them as mere distractions from the inevitable unpredictability of nature but why this indifference to the weather? Is it not rational to prepare for the day ahead? Epictetus provides a clue. Some things are in our control and others are not. Stoics recognize that the weather, much like the course of the stars and the rise and fall of empires, is beyond human control. To fret about it, then, is to waste precious energy on the unchangeable. Imagine waking up to a day where the forecast predicts a storm. While the average person might feel their mood dampen, a stoic sees an opportunity. What then is to be done? To make the best of what is in our power and take the rest as it naturally happens, Marcus Aurelius advises. This isn't mere resignation, 
but a profound engagement with reality as it is, not as we wish it to be. The Stoics' disinterest in a weather app symbolizes a deeper philosophy, a life lived in accordance with nature, accepting its vicissitudes with grace. While we might cling to our apps, attempting to forecast and control the uncontrollable, Stoics remind us of the power of surrendering to the flow of life, finding freedom in the embrace of what we cannot change. In this acceptance, they find not resignation, but the keys to a life of peace and contentment. Lesson 7 they might be immune to reality TV drama. In the labyrinth of modern entertainment, where reality TV reigns supreme with its extravagant displays of drama and conflict, the Stoic stands as a serene anomaly. This is not to say Stoics eschew all forms of leisure, rather, they seek contentment and wisdom in the depths of the mind rather than in the superficial thrills of manufactured drama, the notion that Stoics might be immune to the allure of reality TV drama is not so far-fetched when one considers their foundational belief in focusing on what truly enriches the soul. Seneca, in his letters, counsels us to be selective in our pursuits. Associate with those who will make a better man of you, Welcome those whom you yourself can improve. The process is mutual, for men learn while they teach. This principle extends to the Stoic's choice of entertainment. Would a Stoic find value in observing the orchestrated conflicts of reality TV, or would they find it a hollow distraction from the pursuit of personal virtue and wisdom? The Stoic's approach to reality TV drama or their indifference to it, stems from a deeper understanding of Epictetus's teachings. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. In the face of reality, TV's heightened emotions and contrived situations, the Stoic remains unmoved, seeking instead the tranquility that comes from self-reflection and the cultivation of inner virtues. But this stoic immunity to reality TV drama poses a thought-provoking question. In a world increasingly captivated by the spectacle of others' lives, what could we gain from turning our gaze inward toward the cultivation of our own character and inner peace? The stoic's disinterest in reality TV is not a disdain for entertainment, but a reminder of the richer, more meaningful dramas that unfold within the human soul. What drama in your life deserves more attention than it currently receives? Let's share your interesting stories and profound lessons in the comments. Lesson 8. Their poker face is too good for social gatherings. In the whirlwind of social gatherings, where emotions flutter and flicker like candles in the wind, the Stoic stands as a beacon of tranquility, their demeanor as undisturbed as a serene lake on a windless day. This poker face, a hallmark of Stoic composure, is not a guise of indifference, but a testament to their mastery over inner turmoil. Stoicism teaches that the only true possessions we have control over are our actions, thoughts, and feelings. Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, counseled, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. This strength is what sets Stoics apart in social situations. While others may ride the roller coaster of social dynamics, reacting with visible joy, anger, or disappointment, Stoics maintain their equanimity. They understand that the essence of Stoicism is not in suppressing emotions, but in recognizing their transient nature 
and choosing not to be enslaved by them. If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it. And this you have the power to revoke at any moment, taught Epictetus, highlighting the Stoic's ability to maintain inner peace, regardless of external circumstances. Yet this Stoic calm is often misunderstood. To an onlooker, a Stoic's unchanging expression might seem aloof or uncaring. But beneath the surface lies a deep engagement with the present moment, freed from the tyranny of reactive emotions. The Stoic's poker face at social gatherings is not a barrier, but a bridge to more meaningful, deliberate interactions. In embracing Stoicism, one finds not a shield to hide behind, but a mirror reflecting the true nature of human interaction. Fleeting, often superficial, yet always an opportunity for practice and reflection. The Stoic, with their impeccable poker face, teaches us that in the theatre of social life, true power lies in choosing not to perform, but to observe, learn and engage with the world from a place of calm understanding. Lesson 9. They consider a good day. One where everything goes wrong. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Marcus Aurelius famously penned, encapsulating a core Stoic belief that turns the concept of a bad day on its head. Imagine waking up to a day where everything that could possibly go wrong does. Your alarm doesn't go off, your coffee spills on your shirt, and you're late to an important meeting. For most, this series of unfortunate events would spell the epitome of a bad day. Yet, for Stoics, this is not a disaster, but a golden opportunity. But why would anyone consider such a day good? Stoicism teaches that it's not the events themselves that disturb us, but our judgments about them. Epictetus, another sage of Stoicism, challenges us. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. When faced with adversity, Stoics see a chance to exercise virtues like patience, resilience and resourcefulness. Each setback becomes a moment to practice, responding with equanimity rather than frustration. Can you recall a time when overcoming a challenge left you feeling stronger or more capable? This is the essence of stoic joy in adversity. The day everything goes wrong is not a test of endurance, but an open classroom, offering lessons in the art of living well. Seneca adds another layer to this perspective. Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. The Stoics didn't just passively endure hardship. They actively sought out challenges as opportunities for growth. In this light, a day filled with obstacles is not just good, it's perfect for the Stoic practitioner. Thus, embracing the Stoic mindset transforms our perception of adversity. What others might see as a day to forget, Stoics cherish as a crucible for strengthening their character. The real question then becomes, can we find the strength and wisdom to welcome our own bad days with open arms, seeing them not as impediments, but as indispensable paths to growth. Lesson 10. Their version of small talk involves discussing the nature of the universe. When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, 
to love, Marcus Aurelius once mused, offering a glimpse into the stoic mindset that finds profound joy and meaning in the very essence of existence. Imagine a conversation with a Stoic, where what we commonly refer to as his small talk transcends the mundane and delves into the realms of the universe's nature, ethics, and the very purpose of life itself. For Stoics, every interaction is an opportunity to explore the depths of human experience, far beyond the latest weather forecast or the headlines of the day. But why would a Stoic prefer to discuss the universe's nature over more typical conversation starters? Stoicism teaches that understanding the world around us and our place within it is crucial to living a virtuous and fulfilling life. He who does not know what the world is does not know where he is, Epictetus proclaimed emphasizing the importance of self-awareness and understanding of the universe in Stoic philosophy. Can you recall a time when a seemingly simple conversation unexpectedly shifted to a profound topic, leaving you both challenged and invigorated? This is the essence of the Stoic approach to dialogue. They seek not to bewilder, but to connect on a level that transcends the superficial, believing that true understanding and companionship arise from shared contemplation of life's most significant questions. Therefore, the next time you find yourself engaged in what might start as small talk with a Stoic, be prepared to embark on a journey through the cosmos to question the very fabric of reality and perhaps, in the process, discover something truly remarkable about the world and your place within it. This stoic inclination towards meaningful conversation reveals a fundamental truth, that even the most ordinary moments are ripe with the potential for insight and transformation. As we journeyed through the 10 absurd reasons people cannot stand stoic, we encountered the myriad ways in which Stoicism's serene facade and profound depth can perplex the uninitiated. From their enigmatic tranquility amidst chaos to their unconventional enjoyment of life's trials, the Stoics embody a philosophy that transcends conventional wisdom and societal expectations. Seneca once remarked, life, if well lived, is long enough. This encapsulates the essence of Stoicism, a life rich with purpose, measured not by external validations, but by the quality of our thoughts and actions. In embracing these reasons with humor and insight, we not only demystify Stoicism, but also invite ourselves to reflect on the profound simplicity and strength found in living a Stoic life. It is here, at the intersection of misunderstanding and enlightenment, that we find the true resilience and timeless relevance of Stoic philosophy. If you feel inspired by today's meaningful journey with the Stoic philosophy, please click the like button, leave a comment sharing your opinion, and don't forget to spread these meaningful philosophies to everyone around you. Together, let us build a community where silence speaks volumes and the Stoic spirit thrives. Thank you for your companionship. See you again in the next Meaningful Journeys.